Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the garage. Today we're going to work on a little something. I'm actually going to kind of be jumping between uh, a couple cars. We're going to look at, I've got an issue on my 240SX on the SR20. And I get asked this question a lot. It basically comes down to a vacuum leak. If you're on the throttle, you let off and the car RPMs drop and want to die, you probably have a vacuum leak in your car before. Um, ask me how I know. Uh, I, all I own is old cars that have problems. And especially in turbocharged cars, and especially once you start modifying them and doing intercoolers and cold air intakes and just anything that messes with the vacuum system on your car, um, just from them being older and those rubber lines deteriorating, especially if they've been neglected underneath the hood, and it gets older and rot. And underneath the hood of your car is just a harsh environment anyways. The heats up, cools down, heats up, cools down, takes abuse, and just this stuff doesn't last forever. Um, I've kind of got an issue on that. I'm pretty sure it's a vacuum leak on this car. This car is highly modified, so I'm sure uh, something's just not correct on it. So let's do, uh, first thing I wanna do on anything if you're having this problem, so we're gonna do a visual inspection underneath the hood. Let's go. All right guys, so underneath the hood here, we've got our vacuum lines. And uh, usually they'll run off of your intake manifold. So we've got a couple running here. They run across. This one goes to our blow off valve. We've got another vacuum line down here. They'll have some to your idle air control valve, which will be on your intake manifold. So they go different places. And of course, this one's turbocharged. So we've got our intake uh, inlet piping here off of our inner cooler that runs down. Don't look too hard. We got some rough spots. This car is not perfect. Uh, runs down through here, up over here. And I've kind of loosened this up, but as you can see, it's not uncommon for this stuff to separate. And we'll just go ahead and take this off. So one thing I've learned on chasing down vacuum leaks, especially with aftermarket pieces like intercooler piping and couplers is, so especially since this is turbocharged, we've got a boost pressure that builds and it likes to blow intercooler piping apart. So if you can see, all of our intercooler piping has this bolt clamp style connector versus a connector like this. This screw style connector that's really common. You'll see this like what all the OEM parts use on our intercooler piping and intercooler piping likes to come apart under load and can cause you issues you wouldn't even know. Maybe it comes out just a little bit and uh, now you're not connected down here and just over a little bit and it's gonna cause you all kinds of drivability issues and God forbid this is buried under anything. All right guys, and that's why I say the 240s are so easy to modify and work on because we're gonna over here and look at our 300ZX. And now it gets a lot more intimidating and it is worse. It is worse, but a lot more intimidating, but it's still very doable. This one's got a lot of intake piping over here. We've got some vacuum line, vacuum line, vacuum line running all over here. So this one's going to take a lot more to track down and make sure all your lines are good. And if you're taking you know, on a project car that looks something like this, or maybe it is a 300 ZX, I would highly suggest that you just go through and slowly replace all your vacuum lines. Like we can see, you can see this one right here is actually in pretty bad shape. This one's in pretty bad shape right there. See, it's all dry rotted and uh, that's going to give dry drivability issues for sure if it's not already uh, worn through in some area. So like that one needs to be replaced. I'd say most of these probably. I replaced some, but not all of them, because I was planning on pulling this motor out. Just tracing all your vacuum lines and just slowly replacing them. It's not like a sexy car mod or a cool thing to do, but it will help you with drivability issues and help you keep your car running nicely and for longer and just not giving you the headache where you just want to give up and sell it. And then we also back here are going to have our idle air control valve. This is why 300ZX gets a bad rap because look how buried everything is in our idle air control valves back here. And you want to make sure all your lines hooked up to that are good and electrical connectors, honestly. So I'm not going to do anything else on this for vacuum leaks. Uh, I do have an issue over here and I think since uh and then always if like let's just say you put like your aftermarket in in a cooler in and then you're having some issues you probably didn't get one of these clamps tight enough or uh it came loose 
I, I've seen it so many times on turbocharged cars, especially if you're running, you know, higher boost pressures, blowing apart aftermarket intercooler piping, in stock intercooler piping, you know, anything that's been messed with, major drivability issues, and you might not even be able to drive the car at all. Probably come up with it pretty quickly, but just something to think about and look at. I'd highly recommend uh, these style clamps. I've got a link in the description below for these style clamps and the ones I'm actually using on this car. And if you are upgrading some stuff, uh, as you can see right here, I've upgraded all of our silicone as well for our intercooler down here off the turbo onto the intake manifold and um, then down here as well stuff like that so we're gonna try this down i've uh tracked it down so upon further inspection on this we've got an issue right here with our blow off valve and uh and see that our threads on this are all stripped Let's literally just blown this right off. Look at that. We're gonna just push it on and pull it right off. So I've got an issue right here, which is very unfortunate. And the other day I was taking this out for a photo shoot that we did after we installed the wing. I was having some major uh, vacuum leak drivability issues. And as you can see, it stems from this right here. So as soon as I got on it, it blew this off. And uh, now we're over here. So we're gonna to have to come up with a solution for this. So nine times out of 10, it's gonna be some component that is installed later that, I don't even know how to say this, right? It's just when you start tweaking with your car, stuff like this happens, you know? Um, versus if we just left it all factory, it wouldn't blow the ball off valve off, but it wouldn't look cool, it wouldn't make as much power, right? So that's what we're all here for. So just know when you start tweaking with stuff, you know, a bolt might not get tight, a bolt might rattle loose, so double check, make sure your bolts are good. Then double check, make sure everything's tight. If you ever go to like have anything done on your car, like a whatever, they'll do like a free bolt check at hundred miles afterwards. All right guys, so if you wanna try and track down a possible vacuum leak in your vehicle, there's a few different ways you can do it. Uh, the best way honestly is with a smoke machine, but for the DIY guy in your garage, you're probably not gonna have access to one of those. It's not a tool that's commonly found in anybody's garage. I don't have one. But what I do have is an air compressor. Ba boom We can uh, charge the system with air and then listen for leaks in any areas. And then I've also got this. This is actually specially for the 300ZX. Got a link in the description below for it if you need to get one for you. Where you can, uh, and you can make stuff like this super easily at Lowe's, Home Depot, any hardware store that sells PVC piping. And why I say this one's for the 300ZX, 300ZX has a T underneath the hood where the air filter is at and mass airflow sensor and it's this size so this will slip right up in there and then it also has this fancy little nipple right here that you can use to charge the system with compressed air and uh, section off different areas to see and listen for any leaks, any hisses, any leaks where that air might be escaping. We're not gonna use this tool on the 240 today. Um, honestly, a visual inspection showed me what I needed to see. And a visual inspection a lot of times will give you a pretty good hint um, as to where your problem area is. I've had a few problem areas in the 300ZX for my 300ZX guys and a lot of guys for 300ZX guys on here. Um, on these factory air tubes, the underneath on this side gets folded in. I've seen it on multiple people's 300ZXs. It was like that on this 300ZX when I bought it, this intake tube. The lip is soft right here, so you can slide it on, but a lot of times they'll get caught and folded in. So instead of going on, caught and folded in, and it can create a vacuum right here. We already found a line right here that needs replaced. And uh, this is a 93 300ZX, so every line needs replaced. If you have a 300ZX with OEM lines on it, they need replaced. That's just how it is. They're going to crack and break just like we saw on that one. Example for the 240 for vacuum leaks. Honestly, intercooler piping. I've always had issues with blowing intercooler piping off. Why we've went to this clamp style intercooler pump piping clamp. And I highly suggest, um, highly suggest these. Honestly, should just do it on the 300ZX. I'm pretty sure I have some extra ones. Should just, next time I take these off, just go ahead and upgrade to this and just be done with it. And these I don't like because they'll strip out. You'll go to tighten them and it'll bend these little ridges and it'll strip. And these these will lose their tightness quickly, especially if you bend them over tighten them. They're done for and they're older. As you can see, this guy's pretty heavy duty. 
Highly recommend these. Especially turbocharged guys, you're running into boost. And if you turn the boost up, uh, your intercooler clamps are gonna start going. So boosted guys, get that. And then we can end up with stupid problems like this one that I'll have to um, address and figure out how to fix. Cause, uh, <laughs> yeah. So to perform our pressure test in here with our compressed air, uh, I'm just gonna use this service port. The throttle body's closed, should be okay. Uh, then what we need to do is come up here, disconnect this pipe and plug this side off. This side of course needs to be connected. So we're gonna pretend like we don't know that that's falling off. So with all of this connected, we're gonna connect our air here and start feeding the air into the system here. So we know we go from the intake side down through the intercooler then back up here, then that would go into our turbo, but we're not, not gonna be able to pressurize this system if it's open over here, because then it's gonna go into our exhaust, and you know, then we're not gonna pressurize the whole system and go out the exhaust. So what we need to do is with everything connected is plug this up, and then start to feed air into that side. Unfortunately, I don't have a plug for that right here. Hence why this specialty plug works. And this you can also, uh, you know, it's got a gauge on it too. If you went to Lowe's or Home Depot, you could get a plug that could go into here, plug that, and then start pressurizing the system. And another thing I use, another thing that works great for tracking down little hissing, leaking, escaping air is this. Uh, I'd use this for, um, tracking down like little hisses leaks ac components all that stuff like a pressurized ac system as well bearings that are going bad i wanted to check and see if our we're getting noise from there or getting noise from a bearing on the alternator getting noise from bearing on our power steering pump getting noise from bearing here we just slip these bad boys on and we go down here while it's running and uh, carefully touch in different areas and try and isolate where some noise is coming from. The same thing could be said for, like if we wanted to see if we are getting a hissing sound right here. This will translate the, any kind of sound that's oh, getting emitted from that area and you can hear it clearly and isolated and this works like great. That's like a tool that a lot of people, I don't know, maybe it's old school, maybe, I don't know. I've had it forever and I, I love that tool. When I need it, it's like every time, boom, you can tell what's going on. Especially in an engine bay like this, where it's really hard to get into, you can slip that little where you need to get in and it's really tight if you wanna to listen to something, see if something's making noise down here. Or we've got our different vacuum areas over here to see once we have the system pressurized, you know, where we're getting different. I will say like the smoking machine is awesome because of course it's just visual right off the bat. You don't have to necessarily, uh, you don't have to isolate as much because once you fill it with smoke, smoke's not automatically all gonna go into the engine. It would start to come out these little areas that might be showing. All right, you guys have any questions, hit me in the comments below. I think that's gonna do it for our daily dose of car maintenance stuff. I gotta get this, I gotta get our 240 back up and going. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna work on that, fix that hot intercooler, hot side intercooler piping, get our uh, blow off valve back together. You guys let me know what questions you have in the comments down below. I always love hearing from you. Thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure and hit that subscribe so we can learn together, grow together. Peace, I'll see you guys on the next one. Links in the comments below, help support this channel. Bye.